What is going on guys, DBG here and today we are going to be doing another tier list in NBA 2K22 my team lads. So this is going to be a tier list of the best all around players in the game. So we've got all of these players right here, we got an awful lot of them. So before we get on to if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We put more my team content here than anywhere else. And right now we're trying to hit 285,000 subscribers before, um, trying to hit that before the end of the month. We are quite close. We are close. We're currently like 450 off. We've got like 13 days to do it. So we should, we should, but you just never know. So it's probably about, let's see, like 30 subscribers a day, 35, which is close, but we'll, we hope we'll get it. First up, Aaron Gordon. And I'm going to put Aaron Gordon in the usable category. Again, we're going to go through these quite quickly. Hopefully, we can get this done in like 40 minutes. Currently, obviously, got a little bit of an eye on the Miami Heat and Atlanta Hawks game as well, which is quite, which has been an okay start to the game. But Aaron Gordon, he does nothing wrong. He just doesn't do anything well. His dribbling is pretty good. He's a decent shooter. Like, he's perfectly fine. He is a perfectly, perfectly fine player. Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, maybe he gets moved to good because he does nothing wrong, but he's one of these two tiers. Um, and we're going to put, um, or Albert King into Willis. Like, I think maybe you could argue Albert King into very good, but I do think he is a really, really good player. Like, I think he is more so, um, on the elite level of player than he is in the very good Purely because I just rate, I rate him very, very highly in terms of his defense. I think he should shoot the ball very well off the catch. He's got that very, Ray Allen very quick. So, yeah, for me, he's very much like a Kawhi Leonard. Like, I think you could argue him being better than Kawhi. Okay, then we got Caruso. Now, I'm going to put Caruso as far as... I'm going to put Caruso into good. He's got a really good defensive badge. He's got good dunking. He's got really good dribble sigs. He's got a really good release in 17 and I'm very quick. And again, I don't really know what the flaws of Caruso are. Yeah, he's he's only 6'4", but that's not small for a point guard. He's got good interior. He's a decent shot blocker. I don't really think there is any real flaws, if I do say so, with Alex Caruso. So I'm going to put him in the good category. He might get moved down to usable, though. He might get moved down to usable. Sorry, I'm on my laptop and normally, um, normally I have scroll... Up is up, down is down, but for some reason it's the opposite on this laptop. But Alex English, I'm going to put Alex English at this stage of the game into very good. Like he's not in the best three or four guys to run his position. I don't think he's as good as Albert King. So that's why he's going to go into very good. He's a nice, nice player. Anthony Davis, I'm going to put AD in usable. I'm going to put this AD in 75th AD in usable. I think Davis is fine. Again, I'm lower on AD than most people. Like he's, he's still got his release on normal timing. He's only got... um. Like he's only got... Gold Interceptor. His defensive badges aren't the greatest. I know a lot of people do like AD. But I think it's just because they used AD for so long and are comfortable with him. I don't think in terms of just in-game ability... That he has that much going for him. So I'm going to put AD in usable. Other AD? I'll go very good. I'll go very good. Um... Because this AD is better. If this AD could play power forward, he would be he'd be better. And I know a lot of competitive players do like Anthony Davis, but like AD is one of those players that, yeah, competitive players have a lot of success with him. But like, I'm normally if I see just a normal, an average player, a casual player coming out with AD, I'm never worried. But he can be very successful at the competitive level, so he's going to very good. Um, Artis Gilmore's going into elite. For me, he's in that like top three or four centers conversation. Like, I don't think he's good as Kareem. I don't think he's as good as um, Dikembe. I don't think he's as good as Chris Tapps. I think he's as good. And maybe him versus D-Rob's close. But I think all the other ones he's better than. And he is elite at that center position. Um, He's big. He plays defense. And I think because he's, you could argue him. You could even to this day argue him as the number two center. I'm going to have to put him in here at number. Uh, in the second top tier. And then we've got. See, I don't know what to do with Sabonis. I'm actually going to put Sabonis into the very good tier. I don't like him as a point guard. I just want to make that clear. 
I don't like him playing, even at the primary point guard position. I know no one's going to be taking the ball up with him. But I don't like using him as a point guard. Purely because I think he's most effective as a center. I think he can play that Yao Ming role and he can play it really, really well at the center position. Um, and he shoots better than Yao. So I'm going to say he's very good. And ben Wallace, very good. Very good for Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace's defense is absolutely insane. Um, he will clamp people up. He's maybe, including LeBron, I think he is the best on-ball defensive animation in the game, including LeBron. Some people think LeBron over him. Some people think Kawhi over him. Some people think Jordan. But for me, Ben Wallace is the best. Again, the shooting just lacking that little bit. Bill Walton. Uh, he's usable. Bill Walton's fine. Uh, you know what? He's a 6'11 center. He can't really shoot. I know he plays good defense, can move. I think he might get moved up for for now. He's not great. Now, Blake Griffin. Now, this is a debatable one. I'm going to put my two power forwards right now as Blake and Bob. They are my, they're going to be my two power forwards. And there is one player that I'm so high on that I might end up moving up into the power forward position. Actually, it really depends, because there's the likes of Kevin Durant, who you might have to move up the power forward. Um, I think Dunktober Jokic has to be in that conversation. Oh, I just love Dunktober Jokic, that card. He's... But, like, again, Ty, if you are watching this, you, you know how much I love Set Shot 14. And, like, with the way Jokic moves and stuff, I am I don't ever miss with him. Like, he's just he's just a demigod for me. But, again, Bob has got, Bob's got that Set Shot 25. And Blake is just Blake. Blake is ridiculous. I think Blake's, for me, is be Blake is better than Bob. As I, sometimes with Bob, you shoot a lot of very early or very late just because of how quick that release is. But Blake is just so good. Bull Bull. Uh, elite. Bull Bull is in that next tier. Um, He's 7-2. He's got a long wingspan. He can shoot. Again, if you get a base Bull Bull, you're probably looking more so very good. There's a lot of badged up ones. I don't know. For now, he's going to be in that second tier. Uh, Beal. I've used Beal a few times. Beal's not great. Beal's a 6'3 point guard who can't really create that well. And is an okay release. Beal's not great. Reddish is going to go good. I think Cam Reddish, as far as these tiers go, I think good's the right tier for him. Um, he was really good for his time. He was absolutely fantastic for his time. Um, his time is still now, honestly. But... um. Like, if you compare him to, like, a Ben Wallace or AD, he's a step below. Okay, so now we're going to see if we we can get some players into the worthless tier. Or into the bad tier. So, I'm going to put Westbrook in bad tier. Like, I know he has that weird niche in clutch time where teams leave him wide open because he's Westbrook. I just think Westbrook overall is a just bad card. I think the free card we got today, Dennis Rodman, is in the not great category. He'll play defense. I think Matt Calvin, look, he's, a, he's too small. He's a six-foot tall point guard. I can't justify. I know he's got some like juice dribble sigs, but like the guys aren't that much better than Salim Stadamar. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of Matt Calvin. Um, but Matt Calvin is better than Rick Barry though. Like Matt Calvin is getting moved up before anyone else here. Like Rick Barry really sucks. I don't know what the hell 2K have done with Rick Barry. Like, back in the day, Rick Barry used to be really good. Like even his card had base three on very quick last year. Um. Or at least base three on quick. Um, his token card. In 2K20, he was garbage. In 2K19, he was good, though. He was like a glitched token award where they made him a pink time token award, but if you hadn't already unlocked his ruby, you were able to get him as a ruby. It's kind of crazy. Like, I never unlocked the pink time token market, but I had Rick Barry on my account. But yeah, he's, he's in bad tier. Um, who else? I'm gonna put, is Walt bad? I mean, meme meme not included. Rajon Rondo sucks. Like I know Rondo is him. Like Rondo is him, but like we're talking about actual tier. We gotta put Rondo into the bad tier because I mean Rondo is him, but like Rondo also is not very good. Um, like memes aside, Rondo's not great. Is anyone else bad? No, nah, there's no one else I'm putting in bad tier. Looking at these secondary low tiers. 
I'm going to put in Does Wall have to go into one of these lower tiers? Maybe not. Curry. I'm going to put Curry in usable. He's in the right hands. Curry can actually cook. Like if you put Curry in like Grussy's hands or Faith of Justin's hands, he can actually cook. So I'm going to put Curry in usable. Shea Gills Alexander sucks. He's going to go into not great. He's going to go into not great. He's really not good. Like I don't think he's even better than Bob Sura. He's better than these guys in bad tier, but he's not great. He's really not great. So let me get Kazi Russell. Elite. Elite. Kazi, so good. Like, I can't wait. Like, as soon as this video is done, I'm going to record, like, my videos today will be, like, a no money spent. It'll be, like, a final no money spent squad, and then, like, a brand new no money spent squad. And then we're going to be playing 12 hours straight. Like, Kazi Russell on my new no money spent squad is the player that I'm first looking to get. Like... Before I touch online, the plan is obviously get myself the Ben Wa or Ben, not Ben Wallace. Get myself the Dennis Rodman. Play a couple of games with him. Get him sold. Honestly, get him sold. Get those new gold players, and get Kazi Russell as my main guy, and use him like I've been using Luca. If I want to go and play clutch time, I gotta get Kazi because Kazi's that dude. But yeah, Kazi Russell. Um, elite tier. Elite tier. Cedric, best 10. See, Cedric is better than Kazi. It's not that much of it. It's not that big a difference. Cedric for me, like base 3 on quick versus base 3 on very quick, I don't think it's much of a difference. I really don't. Kazi shoots the ball a bit better. Cedric is taller and a better defender. And yeah, Cedric's just that little bit better. But again, Kazi's 15k. So Kazi, yeah, Kazi's into the elite tier. Cedric's really good. Um, I'm gonna put. I think Chauncey's a lot better than Steph. No, I think especially if you're talking current gen, like Chauncey would be in the potentially very good tier. That base 98, I'm quick on current gen, or I'm very quick. It's either I'm quick or very quick. Either way, it's one of the best releases in the game on current gen. Mullen. Look in the right hands. I have to. In the right hands, Chris Mullen is the best shooting guard on my team. He just is. He just is, so I'm going to put him in best 10. Like, I'm not the right hands. Like, I prefer Kazi to Chris Mullen, but I know that there are a lot of people that would much prefer Chris Mullen to Kazi, so that's where he's going. Chris Webber. I mean, I'm going to put Chris Webber slightly above, like, an AD, but I don't. And, like, an Aaron Gordon, but I don't think Chris Webber's that great. I really don't. I think he's a good tier. Leitner. I'm going to put Leitner in that usable tier. I think he's, like, slightly worse than Webber. Cincinnati's pal. I'm going to put Cincinnati's pal. I'm going to put him very, very good. I think he's... No, I'll put him in good. His player build is just that little bit too small. And he can't... If he could play a two, he'd be in very good. And he can only play small forward. Clyde the Glide Drexler Elite. Elite. He's not in that top tier. He's not in the Luca or MJ level. And for me, he's not as good as... I think Josh Giddy's better than him. But he is in that elite tier. Like, there's one, there's only one player that may make the best 10. Like, Giddy could make the best 10. And I could move Luca to the 2 or Jordan to the 2. I'm not sure about that. Danilo Gallinari. I don't like Gallinari that much. I'm going to put him in usable. I think he's fine. I think Danilo Gallinari is perfectly fine as a player. His release is all right. Ferry. Yeah, Ferry's going into the elite tier. I just think... I think he's training wheels. I think everyone has success with him. I don't think there's any level player that's bad with Danny Ferry. I think he's good for everybody. Um, he's affordable. Like Danny Ferry's, I'm going to put him in elite. Especially off, especially off rip with his 69 total badges. Uh, Danny Manning. One tier higher than Leitner. I don't know. I just much prefer Ferry to Manning. I've used both of them. I just much prefer Ferry. Like I shouldn't, but I do. The Busher. The Busher is going to go into usable. The Busher is defense is a joke. The Busher has like these juice defensive tendencies. And his release is so good. It's a surge release on very quick. Or sorry, on quick, which is one of the best releases in the game. It's the Catino Mobley type release. He greens everything. Now, David Robinson. Now, I'm very tempted. Now, I'm very tempted. And I'm actually going to. Am I... 
I don't know. I think I'm gonna move Bob down. I'm gonna move Bob down and keep David Robinson up there. I'm gonna keep him there. David Thompson. I think David Thompson's usable. I, I think he's a lot better than most people su suggest, but I also don't think he's as good as an Onyx Crusoe. DeRozan. I think DeRozan's gonna go into very good. I think he's not as good as a Clyde. He's not like a top five point guard in the game, but I think he's definitely better than a Chauncey. When, like I've been cooked by him a few times. Really good release. Movement's good. DeRozan's good. Buggy Cousins. Look, Buggy's very good, isn't he? Like, it's just that he came... There's a lot of, like, really good cards at Sand Efficient that are better than... But no, Buggy is very good. Devin Booker. At this stage of the game, Booker is usable. It's just he has that half blinders with his own size up. Like, there's a lot of guys with base four and quick, but none of them are quite like Devin Booker in terms of just ease of getting the shot open. I think the reason is, is that he's got, like, his own size up and half blinders. So he's very easy to get people on his side. And then once you get someone on the side and you just shoot Bob Booker, it's a... It's a guaranteed make. It's a guaranteed, guaranteed make. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Then we have got uh, Dikembe Mutombo. Dikembe is going to go into elite tier. Look, I can't put him in best 10 because he's not in the best three, best two centers in the game. Um, Dolph. I think at this stage of the game, Dolph is usable. Dwight. Dwight, on, just because of his defense, I'm going to put him in very good. Defensively, he's maybe the best power forward in the game. Offensively, he leaves a lot to be desired. He's not the greatest offensive player. If I do say so myself, he is really not the greatest offensive player in the world. So we are probably about halfway through this list. Okay, we could get this done in a half an hour. But Dwayne Wade. Now, this is a tough one. Like, do I put Wade into elite or do I put Wade into very good? I'm going to put Wade into very... I'll put Wade into elite. I'll put Wade in as the lowest of elite. He could get moved down to very good. He's a little bit small. He's a little bit small. Wade versus DeRozan is a very close one, though. And I think Clyde's a lot better than Wade. But Wade gets those defensive animations. It is kind of crazy. And again, Wade can, can get chased down blocks. His height makes no difference. Yeah, Wade. Wade's going to go elite. He's going to go elite. Eddie Curry. His stamina is a huge issue. He's going in good. He has the potential to be very good. He would have been very good if his stamina wasn't so bad, but his stamina is awful. Then we've got Elgin Baylor. I mean, he's 6'5", can play the two. His release is meh. His dribbling is okay. I mean, he's usable, I guess. He's usable. Gary Payton. Better than Steph, I guess. Gary Payton, for me, is like a slightly worse Alex Caruso. So we've got to put Payton in good. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, do I put him in good? Like he's better than AD. Yeah, I'll put him in good. Put him in the good tier. He's a pretty good card. It's just, again, if you ask me who's better, him or Dwight, I'm taking Dwight 10 times out of 10. This Giannis is going into the elite tier. Purely because there are players I prefer. Like, if you want to argue Giannis in your best 10, I am not going to argue that for a second. It's just, I prefer Cedric. Um, I think Chris Mullen might be there at the two. And also, I prefer Kevin Durant. And I prefer Blake. So, that is why Giannis Santa de Campo is going into elite tier and not in best 10. I mean, Glenski's... If you're on current gen, Glenn is elite. If you're on next gen, Glenn is probably good. So, I'm going to put him in the middle. I'm very good. Base 98. Like, base 98, current gen... Versus next gen base 98 is one of those huge ones because it's such a good release on current gen. It's not a terrible release on next gen, but it's not the best release in the world on next gen. So that's the reason why he's going into very good tier. Hakeem Olajuwon. Gotta put him into elite, don't I? Like he is in that second tier of centers. I think you could argue, if you like him, you could argue him in that top tier centers. For me, I wouldn't. I think he's that little bit off the top tier centers, but I think you could argue him there. Hido Turkoglu. He's good. Hito can cook. Hito can straight up cook. He puts the ball in the basket like up there with the best in him. His movement's good. His jumper's good. His height is good. His defense isn't terrible. Like for me, he's just a better Gallinari. Lads, this is my like controversial pick. Better Ben Wallace. 
Herbert Jones into Elite Tier. This card is so damn good. It's just that release. It's that base 83 on very quick. It reminds me of 2K20 base 98. Like, he doesn't miss off the catch. His defense is up there with the best defenders in the game. He's got a great player build. His dribble sigs are all right. And I don't know. I don't know. Does he belong... Does he belong down here? More than likely. But maybe just because he's free, I'm gassing it. And I probably am gassing it. Putting him up here. But, like... No, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, Herbert Jones going into Elite. Then we got Ja Morant. I'm going to put Ja in usable. I mean, Ja is perfectly fine. He's one of the most common players I've ever come up against, but he's fine. Uh, Jalen Rose. Very good. Especially if you can get one in badged out, he is very good. He's not that second tier point guard, but he is still in that usable tier point guards. Suggs. I'm going to put Suggs in good. I don't like that release that much. I thought it was okay at the start of the year. He got the same dribble sigs and stuff as his card from like September or October. He's fine. Uh, Jalen Suggs is a perfectly, perfectly fine card. Nothing wrong with him, but um, he's just a little bit undersized. So I'm going to put him into the good tier. Um, James Harden. I'm going to put Harden in good. I think he's he's incredibly slept on. Like, there are guys that still know how to use Harden. Or he's an unblockable dunk. His release is just too slow. Like If they give Harden quick dribble style... They keep the Harden escape and they keep his dunks at the same as they were and they give him his release on very quick. That suddenly becomes a top tier point guard in this game again. Trust me, Harden has the potential to be really good this year. Worthy. Worthy's going into very good. I like that release. I like that 22 on very quick. I like his dribbling. I like his player build. Um, I don't even mind the, like, the weird upper because I just got so used to it because I used that Ruby Worthy so much at the start of the year. For me, he's just a better throw, Bailey. Jay Rich is going into very good as well. This guy's escape is ridiculous. If you do an escape dribble, he gets this such a good animation. His release is nice. I heard it's kind of baited on current gen. But his release is really, really nice. It's one of the most slept on cards in the game at that two-guard position. Like for me, he's a lot better than the Cam Reddish, who I replace. Like I replace Cam him with Cam Reddish or Cam Reddish with him. Um, he's going to very good. Jalen Brown, preference, literally preference. Who you guys prefer, Jay Rich or Jalen Brown? I prefer Jay Rich. Most people prefer Jalen Brown, and I'm cool either way. I am completely, completely cool with it either way. So yeah, that is where we are. That is where we are right now. Um. Then we have got Jerry Sloan. Jerry Sloan is very good as well. He's a little bit undersized. So the only issue with Jerry Sloan is that he is quite small. And um, with being quite small, there is... Like, he's not going to get too many boards, but I, I like him. I like him on defense. I use him at the two. And he's very comparable to a Jason Richardson. Um, he's a great player to have the two alongside a Luka Doncic, and he actually plays good defense. So, Jerry Sloan... Is going to go into very good. Jimmy Butler. One of the most slept on cards in the game. Very good. This guy is one of the most slept on cards. The only issue with Jimmy Butler is that he's... Like he's a power forward center. Like if he could play even small forward. He'd be one of the best small forwards in the game. Stats wise he's perfect. Other than range badges wise he's perfect. The, again the only issue with him is his positions. Then we got Wall. I'm going to put Wall in good. I think Wall is very comparable to a Peyton, to an Alex Caruso. I know his interior and his block aren't there, but he gets the block animations. And the interior doesn't seem to be too bad because of how good his block animations are. So he's going to go into good tier. Isaac. Elite. Elite. One of the best players in the game. Period. Doesn't matter what his position is. Like, doesn't matter where it's power forward, small forward. One of the best players in the game. Period. I'm not the biggest fan of his release, though. Giddy. Now, Giddy might get moved up. Giddy might get moved up. I'm so high on this card. I think this very Jason Kidd release on very quick is so good. His fade is ridiculous. His player model makes him look like he's 6'10. His behind the back with the skinny player build is ridiculous. Like Josh Giddy, easily, easily going into elite tier. Could potentially end up in best 10. Josh Smith get into elite tier as well. The best value card in the game. Three and a half thousand MT for this freaking demigod. Three and a half thousand MT for a demigod like Josh Smith. I'm telling you, lads, elite tier, no-brainer. Kareem, best 10. I still think 
he's the best center in my team. I still think he's the best center in the game. Um, I think his three-point shot is good. His overall defense is good. His player build is good. And I think he's better than Kristaps. I don't think it's like... It's, it's not like his night and day difference. But I do think he is slightly better than Kristaps Porzingis. So, um, yeah, he's going to go into best 10. Then we have got Carl Anthony Towns. I mean, Kat's going to go into like the usable tier. Released a little bit slow, but he's not bad. Uh, Carl Malone, very good. Was one of the best power forwards in the game when he came out. You would definitely argue him up in elite. Hmm. I don't think he's good as Josh Smith. I think I'm going to put him elite. I'm going to put him elite. Kawhi Leonard, elite. I mean, if I got Herbert Jones in elite, I got to put Kawhi in elite. Kawhi is just a better, ver is just a slightly better Herbert Jones. Uh, Kevin Durant's going best 10. Kevin Durant is so damn good on both ends of the floor. Like, KD's going in as our small forward. So right now, our small forwards are going to be KD, Cedric. Our two guard, it's are going to be Chris Mullen. I know what I'm going to do. Josh Giddy's in as one of my point guards. Chris Mullen's in. Power forward, Blake is in as one of them. And David Robinson's in as a power forward. I know what I'm doing for my best 10. But um, Clay Thompson. Clay's going to very good. Clay's a good a good shooting guy. But for me, is Clay any better than like a Jalen Brown or a Glenn Rice? I don't think so. I think he's good. Don't think he's spectacular. Uh, Kobe. I think Kobe. For me, Kobe's better than Clay. Just an opinion. But I prefer Kobe to Clay. Very similar level cards. Chris Stapp's getting the best 10. You're going in as a center. So Chris Stapps is going in as a center in my best 10 lineup. With David Robinson and Blake Griffin going in as the power forwards. So again, this is a really close one. There are so many players even in this like lower tier of this elite tier that you guys can push up in the best 10. But um, this is what we have so far. And uh, with Giddy at the 1, I think you guys know what I'm doing. LeBron James. Uh, I mean elite. I don't really like LeBron. I think he's a really good on-ball defender. I think his release is okay. Um... I think his movement is quite bad. I think he moves very badly at the ball. I think once we get the quick shifty LeBron James, that card will be a demi, but we don't have that card yet. But his defense is ridiculous. Like, I think this will be the year LeBron. I just don't think it's the year LeBron yet for most players. Anytime when I play this LeBron, I'm never worried about him. Okay, I would be very worried about it. If I came up against two-way Roko, this LeBron would be worried. But against normal players, I'm not. Um, very good where Lonzo Ball is going. Lonzo's still a really solid point guard to this day. I mean, Kay Cunningham would probably be borderline elite. And Luka Doncic is going in as a two guard. Like, this is probably where... Like, I actually really like Luka Doncic as a secondary ball handler. If, as long as you have a on-ball defender. Because Luka's fine guarding off the ball. And Luka's even fine guarding on-ball, if you're being honest. Unless you're playing someone really good, he's fine with that. But, um... I would have Luka Doncic as the two guard with Giddy. Because, like, when Luka does... Like, when Luka's shooting those catch-and-shoot threes, they're even less contestable. It's even harder to contest a catch-and-shoot three from Luka than it is to contest him off the dribble. So, like, having someone like Giddy beside Luka, for me, is, re is a really, really good combo. And having Luka off the ball might make him even more effective. Then we got Magic Johnson. Uh, I'm going to put Magic into very good. He's maybe the best defensive point guard in the game. That's really it. Manu Ginobili. Top of very good. I really like Manu. Manu's going top of very good. I think he's a really good player. I think he plays well on offense, plays well on defense. He moves well. Yeah, top of very good. Jordan, best 10. Jordan, best 10 in a point guard. Have we got our full best 10? So we've actually completed our best 10. We got Giddy and Jordan as our point guards. Luca and Mullen as our twos. Cedric Durant as our threes. These two as our fours and these two as our fives. We still got players left, so we might change somebody, but I don't think we're going to. Dunktober, Jokic, um, Elite. Elite. Dunktober, Jokic. I love Setshaw 14. I love Kawhi behind the back. I love the way Dunktober, Jokic moves. Like, Dunktober, Jokic for me is one of the most slept on players in all of my team. Like, people are saying, oh, he's only up for the meme. No, I really rate this card. I think for 100k, you're not getting much better than this card in my team. I really don't. 
I think he's a super, super effective player at that power four position. Or even, and even you can use him as a center position as a mismatch. He dribbles the ball better than any center. He shoots the ball better than any center. His player build is all right. It's just, again, a little bit low perimeter defense that I haven't even noticed because he's got good lateral quickness and 94 speed. I haven't even noticed that he has low perimeter defense. Like, Dunk Toby Jokic is so damn good in my team. He's in, he's not, he's not best 10. He's not better than Blake, but he's elite. Oscar Robertson, now, I think he's slightly better. I'm actually moving, screw it, I'm moving Wade down. Because, like, if I move, I think Oscar Robertson's better than Wade. And if I'm putting Manu down, I think Manu and Wade are so even. They're different players. I think Manu's way better in offense, Wade's better in defense. But I think in terms of overall effectiveness, they're very similar. So, like, if I have to put one of them in one tier, I might move both of them back up to elite. But I'm putting Manu and Wade in the same tier. Uh, Patrick Ewing. Uh, elite. A player that you could argue in the best 10 with a David Robinson. Ewing is a damn good card. Ewing's a really good card, especially at that power forward position. Um, I'm going to go good for Pegasol. Power was really good for his time. Like He came at day one in season five. He was easily like a top top tier player for his time. Um, actually, no, I'm going to move him to usable because I don't think he's any better than Anthony Davis. And that was always my argument that he was equally as good as Anthony Davis when he came out. Um, so I'm going to put them both in the same tier. They're both going to go into the usable tier. Uh, Paul George, elite, elite, again, in that really, really good two guard, I'm going to move Cam Reddish, is Cam Reddish in good, I'm going to move Cam Reddish up to very good, because like Cam Reddish is worse than Paul George, but there's not two tiers, two tiers different, Pistol Pete Maravich, good, he's in the good tier, again, his release is just slow, the only problem with Pistol Pete is the release is slow, he can shoot the fadeaways though, he's all good, but again, his release is very, very slow. I really like Pistol Pete though. Ralph Sampson. Uh, like Ralph and Yao are going to go in the same tier. And I'm going to put them in the same tier as Sabonis and very good. They're just giants. They're just giants. Um, Ray Allen. There's one player that I'm going to put into my best hand that's going to piss off you people. Ray Allen is going to go into... Where did I leave Ray Allen? Ray Allen's going to go very good because I think he's on a similar level to a Clay and a Kobe. Reggie Lewis, again, on a similar level to a Clay and a Kobe. Putting him into very good as well. Richard Duma. Um, Richard Duma, his wingspan's a bit shorter, but he's got a good release. I'm still going to put him into very good. He's a 6'7", 2 guard. If he's still at his 7 for 4 wingspan from last year, we could be looking at a leap, but he does not have quite the player build that he had in NBA 2K21. So he's staying right where he is. RJ Barrett, uh, very good. RJ Barrett's been very good. He's not quite in that elite tier, but I mean, you could argue it. Especially because I got Herbert Jones in here. You could definitely... Actually, no, screw it. Herbert Jones, come down. You're going, you're going down a tier. I was like, I've got Alex English in this tier. Herbert jo As much as I love Herbert Jones, I'm not putting Herbert Jones into elite tier. Herbert Jones, get down to very good. Rudy Gay, elite though. Rudy Gay is elite. Again, his handle's good, his shooting's good. A guy that you could honestly argue is in the top 15 players in this game. Like, Rudy Gay is absolutely exceptional. Um, then we have got Scotty Barnes. Very good. I think Scotty Barnes versus Herbert Jones is so, so close. Like, if you're asking me who I prefer, I would probably say Scotty, but it's not by much. It's really not by much. I think these two guys are very similar players, so I'm going to have to put them out in the same tier. Uh, Scotty Pippen. And Scotty's defense is so good. Scotty's movement is so good. And Scotty shoots the lights out, especially on next gen. Scotty's going into elite tier. Scotty is going into that elite tier, lads. He's so damn good. I think you could even argue him over Kawhi. You could argue him as one of the best players in the game still. Shaquille O'Neal. Um, look, he's the best interior in the game, other than Will Chamberlain. So like, I'm going to put Shaq and Will Poton very good. Because like they are the best in the game at what they are. It's just... What they are is not a way that most people play, if you get me. So they're both going to go into very good. Kemp. Kemp is going to go high very good. He's not as good as Carmelo. He's going to go into the high very good tier. Because Kemp is really, really good. Kemp's movement's good. Kemp's shooting's good. Kemp's all-around game is good. I'm actually, I'll move AD up one. So the tie doesn't get angry. I'll move Anthony Davis up one. But you know what? Screw it. I'll go, I'll call this tier. 
No, I'm keeping AD down usable because he he is just usable. He's on that same. AD should be on the same tier as Cat and like Pow. Terry Dishinger. Look, as much as we like to say he's not that great, Terry Dishinger is elite. Terry Dishinger is in that second tier. He is really in that second tier of players. Nothing special. Not like absolutely spectacular. Wasn't worth a lock in, but he is in that second tier. Uh, Thon Maker. Now this is what I hate to have. To, I hate having to put Thon Maker in the lead because Thon could easily be in the best ten. There is one player that's being moved out of my best ten. I don't know who because I'm moving, putting Zion Williamson in. I'm so high on Zion, by the way. Thurl Bailey. Thurl's going into elite. Thurl's six eleven. Could shoot the kind of shoot the ball. We'll play great defense. We'll just be an all-around pass on the defensive end. Decent on offense as well. So Thurl get into elite tier. Um, Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan's going to go into very good tier. Really good defender. Really nice shooter. He's a cone, but like he does his job as well as anybody. Tracy McGrady. I mean, if I've got like Cincinnati's Powell and stuff in, I'm going to put Tracy in usable. Is Tracy that much better than Devin Booker? I don't think so. I'm going to put Trey Young into usable. Like, Trey Young's better than Steph Curry. With the Trey fade, Trey release, Trey escape. Like, Trey can get out more than Steph Curry can in this game, so. I'm going to put Trey in usable. Uh, Psycho T. Psycho T is going to go usable. I think he's between usable and good. I'm going to put him in usable. Again, I do prefer Psycho T to an Anthony Davis, so. Victor Oladipo. I'm going to put Oladipo in good. Uh, I think he's like... No, I'll put him in very good. Uh, No, he's good. He's good. He's better than Wall. He's worse than Wade. They're very similar players. Um, We're going to go elite tier for uh, Vince Carter. Vince is such a good shooter. Vince is such a good dunker. Vince is such a good offensive player. Man, I don't necessarily regret not getting Vince, but I also, if I had gotten Vince, would not have regretted getting him. Wolf Frazier... Not great, is he? He's really not great. Wayne Embry. I'm put Wayne Embry in usable. His release is his three point rating, his release are low. He's all around solid. Problem is he's six eight, a little bit of size to power forward. Can't play to four, can't play to three. And he's not a great shooter. Willis Reed. Uh, usable. Um Zach Levine. Very good. Uh no no. If I've got Oscar Robertson elite, Zach Levine's gonna go into elite. Levine, I think, is a step above the likes of Wade and Manu. Um, he's also a step below the guys, likes of Jordan, um, Yiddy, and Luca. Levine's a really good player. I think Levine versus Clyde is a close one. So, Jurens Ilgauskas. I mean, I'll put him in good just because he's tall and can shoot. And then Zion Williamson. And this is the last spot we have. I don't know who I'm going to take out of my best 10. So I really like Zion. I like Zion more than most people like Zion. I just want to make that point clear. I'm going to move Mullen down. I'm going to move Mullen down because I'm going to have... No, I'm going to move Giddy. Mullen, you stay up. I'm going to move Giddy down. I'm going to move Giddy down one tier. Giddy is not going to be my best 10 players. It's going to be Luca and Jordan as the point guards. Mullen and Cedric as the twos. Kevin Durant, Zion at the threes. Blake Griffin and David Robbins at the power forwards. And Chris Stapps and Kareem at the five. So anyway, yeah, that is the tier list. Let me know what you guys agree with, what you guys don't agree with. At the end of the day, this is just a tier list. This is just my opinion on 2K players. Don't get too pissed off if um, my tastes are not the same as yours. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.